Hey guys, welcome back to Chef Monica's Kitchen. The magic day has arrived. I am going to make tuna noodle casserole. This is Excited? a first. It's a first. So I'm making this actually with a uh, variation so that you can, if you want to utilize the filling that the tuna is going to be as a stuffed mushroom. It's the same thing I do with crab when I make crab stuffed mushrooms. So this is a multi-purpose recipe. Okay, first things first, I have a little bit of olive oil in my pan here. And I have some chopped up green onion, some chopped up green garlic, or you could use um, regular garlic cloves that you mince up, red pepper, preferably red because I like it, it's sweeter as opposed to green, but if that's all you've got, by all means use it, or if you have yellow or any other color there, there above, and then cilantro and parsley. If I happened to have either dried or fresh dill, I would use that as, as well. I do like dill with anything that has to do with seafood or fish, um, but I don't have it, so we're not gonna use it. Okay, get this on my burner here, over a medium high heat. I'll start sauteing that. Hi, sorry, I was over there. Come on over this way. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what is he waiting for? Nothing. Okay, so. Um, we're gonna use, again, our family pack of tuna. That's uh, about uh, 11 ounces of tuna. You can use a little more if you want, but I wanna make sure that I have something that's easily accessible. It's just regular tuna and water. I don't wanna have the tuna in oil because I'm adding the olive oil myself, so we're gonna toss that in there along with our other ingredients. If I can get it out of here. Come out. Out, Dad's spot. I might need spot. to scrape it out. I might need to scrape it out, you're right. I'm going to use my knife for this. I know that's totally not right, but we're using it anyway. Okay. One more on this side. You probably are much more effective at this than I am. Okay. It's still in there. For the love of tuna. Okay. Beautiful. Now, let's season this up. I'm going to add, again, some salt. Always start with salt and pepper. Here. So now we're going to jazz this up a little. We're going to add some arugula. I have fresh arugula. You could use fresh spinach. If you wanted to really like sneak in some veggies for your kids that you think that they'll like, like broccoli, you could put some broccoli in there. Whatever vegetable you like that you have, throw it in here. It increases the volume. It also will increase the nutritional value. So you've got something with good protein and good veggies in there. I've got a bunch of fresh arugula. We're going to toss all this in there because arugula reduces to virtually nothing, just like spinach and mushrooms do. Come out. Nothing wants to come out of the packaging today. Just par for the course for my day. How's your day going? Are you having trouble getting things out of their packages? All right. I think we lost some arugula overboard. There we go. Toss that in there. Give it a quick stir, and you'll see how quickly this is going to wilt down here. And I do want to add a little bit of lemon juice at this point because I want to make sure I can keep the arugula green. And also, I always use lemon juice when I'm cooking fish or seafood. And a wee bit of Worcestershire sauce, about a teaspoon or so. At this point, we'll continue sauteing for a little bit until this is all cooked down. And then I'm going to add one stick one well, do you want to wait and do that in a minute? No, I'm going to put it in now. All right. Um, one package, not stick. This is not butter. It's cream cheese, um, which is eight ounces of cream cheese. And normally, most tuna noodle casseroles have a ton of mayo in them. I'm not using a ton of mayo. I'm going to use the creaminess from the cream cheese. But I am going to use about a couple of tablespoons, hefty tablespoons, and that's it. And this is going to be for a pound of pasta, so it's not that much. And we'll continue cooking this down till all of the cheese is melted together and all the vegetables are cooked through. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So the tuna and the cream cheese and all the veggies, the arugula are all melted together and all one and happy. So at this point, if I wanted to turn this into a filling for stuffed mushrooms, 
I would let this cool completely and it will kind of re-thicken a little bit. And then you could take either portobello mushrooms or your thicker um, stuffer mushrooms and pop the filling in there and then top it with Parmesan cheese and bake those for about 20 minutes and you would have stuffed mushrooms. This case, obviously, we're turning this into a tuna noodle casserole, so I have to go ahead and cook my noodles and then I'll show you how we assemble it in a second. Alrighty, so I cooked our little elbow macaroni till they're al dente, which just means to the tooth. Italian for just slightly undercooked so that they still have a bite to them because this is going to then go into the oven and continue cooking. Um, I also reserved a little bit of the pasta cooking water in there because it has a little bit of starch and that will help to adhere the um, tuna sauce to the noodles. So at this point we'll take all of that deliciousness, toss it in with the elva macaroni, and then stir that really really well until it's really well combined. And then I'll transfer it to our baking dish, which I just greased with a little bit of olive oil. You can use cooking spray or butter, whatever you prefer. I just like to keep it a little bit light there. And I'm not super fond of cooking with spray because I don't really know what's in it. Okay, all that's in there. Set this aside here. Give it a quick little stir. You could really eat that just as is. You wouldn't even have to go the next step, but we're gonna go the next step. So typically for these casseroles, they'll top them with breadcrumbs like that. So I'm going to do it with just a little bit of cheese on top. I'm going to use goat cheese. If you like Parmesan, you can use Parmesan. Whatever cheese floats your boat makes you happy. By all means, use that. And incidentally, this could be made gluten-free if you use gluten-free pasta. So win-win for everyone there. Okay, let's see if I can get this in here without making a ginormous mess. I might still make a mess. That's okay. That's what Jeff's going to do. I was going the other direction. Oh, sorry. Fake <laughs> out. It was, it was you're going to go left handed instead of right handed. I didn't realize I was going to go left handed either because I'm not even left handed. So we'll spread this out evenly. I'll crumble up the goat cheese over the top of it. We'll put it into the oven at 375 degrees for approximately, I'm going to say 20 to 25 minutes until it gets nice and bubbly. The cheese is melted over the top and it starts to get a little brown. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Tuna noodle casseroles coming out of the oven. Didn't like that song? Okay, all right, so here we go. How excited can you be? It's just tuna. I like tuna. <laughs> I was a cat in a former lifetime. Okay, so goat cheese is all melted. I did just spread it out a little and make sure it covered it evenly and it's all bubbly and yummy. Um, ordinarily, I would dive right into this, but I will probably burn my mouth if I do that. But I do want to take just a tiny, tiny little bite here. You should let it cool a little bit, though. Look how yummy and luscious that is. Hot and steamy. Hot and steamy, I know. I'm going to wait. But I want to taste it. Oh my gosh, that has so much flavor in it. I'm like weeping from tuna noodle casserole. Seriously, guys, I know it sounds like it's like the world's most boring dish, but this is awesome. Go home and make it. Stay home and make it. Back to quarantine. <laughs> <Okay>. Bye. <laughs>